Hi, I am Marc-André Bélanger and I will present the paper A Foreign Function Interface Between Gambit Scheme and CPython that I wrote with Mark Feely. This talk will be structured uh, as follows. We will go through our goals and motivations, then the implementation details of the work that we've done, and finally we'll go through uh, an example where we will write an HTTP server with the Flask Python module. Our goals and motivation uh, are quite simple. We want to be able to use Python from within Gambit Scheme uh, as seamlessly as possible. And so here you see an example of what we mean by that. We want to be able to map Python functions. The hex function is a Python built-in function. We want to be able to map this object onto a list, which is a scheme list, and get back a result. We also want to be able to easily use its modules. So we want to be able, for example, to import the calendar module, define a scheme surrogate for the calendar uh, dot month uh, method, and actually display the result. And we also want all of this to be done concurrently. And as you see here in example, we can create a list of threads using the Gambit thread procedure. From within the thread procedure, we want to execute some uh, Python function. And all of these threads have to be running concurrently. Now, why did we choose to interface to Python? Uh, Python is very popular. The Python package index has approximately 400,000 packages uh, as of uh, today. And some of them are very high quality and are also actively maintained as some businesses depend on them. And you have access to uh, packages for very various fields such as uh, quantum mechanics or uh, low level networking protocols, uh, all within the, the Python package index. On the other hand, Scheme has orders of magnitude fewer libraries and so it would be a very good advantage for us to have access to the whole of the Python package index from within Gambit Scheme. Now to do this, we must do one thing, and it's to build the bridge between the languages. And for us, this bridge has uh, mainly two aspects. It has a syntactic and a low-level uh, aspect. For the syntactic aspect uh, and the low-level uh, interface to work, we must know about each implementations, data representation, memory management, and threading model. Now, we are using the Gambit Scheme scheme implement, uh, implementation, but for Python, we're going to use the CPython implementation in this work. CPython is the canonical Python implementation and has a well-documented C API that is stable between minor releases, which is a great advantage to us as we don't have to always fix uh, now, Gambit and CPython, of course, they use different data representations, and so we must be careful to ensure the proper conversion of data between the languages. This happens at the lowest level of the implementation uh, in each language. So, in this particular case, we need a very good knowledge of uh, the implementation's internals, uh, which are Gambit internals, and the, uh, a good knowledge of the well-documented C API for CPython. Now, our FFI uses the Gambit, uh, it uses the Gambit scheme <coughs> CFFI to wrap the low-level Python C API functions. Let's go through an example where we will define a foreign object. In this case, this is an object that is returned and handled by the uh, Gambit scheme CFFI by calling the scheme wrapper for the PyDict new procedure we get an object that we can print its representation, which is in this case is uh, indicative of a dictionary. So D is in, indeed a dictionary. If we print its contents from within uh, Python, we get an empty dictionary back. And then we can call the low level C API to set the key, the name key to the gambit scheme value in the D dictionary. And once again, 
if we print the contents of the dictionary from within Python, we get back the mutated dictionary. So in CPython, every object is a PyObject pointer. So every Python object is a PyObject pointer. In Gambit, using the Gambit CFFI, what we do to have a richer runtime typing is that we tag each foreign pointer that is created by the Gambit, sch Gambit scheme CFFI with the Python value of the type that we're handling. And so this here, if we're handling a, a Python integer, we will tag the Gambit scheme foreign object with the pi object star slash int symbol, which represents to us that we're holding a reference to a Python integer. And we do this for all of the, the Python types, such as float, list, dict, and everything. As we've seen, the low level interface requires manual conversions. And so when we implement the higher level interface up to the syntactic interface, we want to have a simple way to automatically convert the object between representations from gamut scheme to CPython. So that's what we did. We, we created a mapping from scheme to Python and all of these uh, conversions have a direction. They're either unidirectional or bidirectional. And as you can see, most of them are bidirectional. This is not the exhaustive list of uh, conversions that we have. You can find that in the, in, in the paper. But you can see that intuit intuitively, fixnums and bignums map bidirectionally to Python integers. Uh, Python integers can be bignums. The flownums map to floats. In this case, the gambit scheme void object behaves and is used exactly like the Python none object. So we have a direct mapping between these two objects. Same for booleans, etc. Uh, we chose list to map to list and vectors to tuples because <coughs> uh, they both have fixed lengths. Now tables map to dicks uh, and so on. You have to notice here that the unidirectional arrow between symbol and string simply means that when you convert a scheme symbol to a Python string and back again. So the round trip produces back a string because you end up with a Python string, which maps to a scheme string. And last but not least, scheme procedures are all converted to a Python function and vice versa. Now, sometimes you want to have a much more finer control over what happens during the conversions, even if you're using the syntactic interface. And for this, we allow to completely bypass uh, automatic conversions with a round trip that respects uh, EQness. Concretely, that means that when you use the uh, scheme operator or function on a scheme object, well, the Python side receives a, an instance of the scheme object Python class, which itself returns back the unconverted scheme object when you uh, send back the result to the scheme. And the same, is, uh, the same is true for Python. When you call the foreign procedure on a Python object and do the round trip, you get back the Python object. This is exemplified here. If you define a scheme list inside the X variable and you assign the Y Python variable to the unconverted value X, you print the contents, it's a capsule object. The capsule object just wraps a pointer to a a scheme for an object and EQness is preserved as you can see here. This value will convert the foreign object back to the scheme object as we can see here. And the same is done on the Python side where we can define a Python list, define a scheme variable with a foreign that is unconverted Python value. You get a pi object start list and then using the is identity operator in Python, you can see that the scheme value y is the same as the Python list that is up here. We will go through the syntax later. Now, <clears throat> Gambit and CPython manage memory differently. Gambit uses a hybrid compacting GC and most of its objects are movable. However, there exist RC objects which are reference counted, allocated on the C heap, 
and they contain a reference to a scheme object. The, the foreign objects, which are created by Gambit Scheme, the Gambit Scheme FFI, just encapsulate a C pointer to foreign data. On the other hand, CPython uses refer uh, reference counting exclusively, and so we have to be very careful in the low-level implementation that we use uh, proper pi incref and pi decref C macros in order not to have any leaking. And in the case of CPython, the equivalent of the Gambit foreign objects are uh, CPython capsule objects, which hold foreign references. Another difference between the implementations is their threading model. They are quite different. <clears throat> in the Gambit case, you have a single Gambit thread, which is an OS thread, that has a Gambit scheme scheduler and multiple scheme threads executing inside the same OS thread. In Python, the story is different. So every Python thread created from the, the threading module is an OS thread. And so we have to find a way to bridge the two different models. By design, we cannot request uh, code execution from the Gambit C interface when we're on the CPython side, because the CPython thread is not the same as the Gambit processor, which, which is uh, uh, an OS thread itself. And by design, only <clears throat> threads that correspond to a Gambit processor can execute scheme code. To solve this, uh, Gambit has procedural interrupts that can be raised from any OS thread. And what this does is that it uh, sets the scheduler to uh, execute an associated scheme procedure. Now, we use this to build a mechanism called foreign procedure calls. And this is quite analogous to remote procedure calls. This mechanism uh, relies on what we call buddy threads. These buddy threads are pairs S, I, P, I of Gambit and CPython threads. In this case, the ith S thread is the ith scheme thread, and the same for the ith Python thread. These are always created lazily, and it's symmetrical. So CPython threads can be created by scheme, and scheme threads can be, uh, or the creation of scheme threads can be requested through a message by any Python thread. And these two threads, this pair, behave as coroutines, and they exchange messages exclusively as CPython objects. As we saw, we cannot create uh, uh, scheme objects from within CPython, but we can create Python objects from within Gambit Scheme. To see this uh, mechanism in action, let's go through a single, uh, single step of this code. And so here we import the Python module, then we define a uh, Python foreign object because we're calling the CFFI directly, and this is a very lowest level uh, interface. <clears throat> and here we can call the, uh, we can get back the Python built-in hex function that we store in a foreign object. And then we can convert it using this procedure, which is general, and we'll just uh, dispatch on the object tag that we mentioned earlier. And do the proper conversion to obtain a scheme closure, which we can call with the value 42. So right after the import statement here, this is what the heaps look like. There's the Gambit heap on the left and the CPython heap on the right. Both have been initialized when we started the program. And after uh, during the importation of the module, the CPython heap has been initialized uh, by the, the CFFI. Now, at this point, only the scheme thread is running. Then, when we define the p-hex variable, as we mentioned, it points to a foreign object, which is the hex function. Note that this doesn't use the FPC mechanism. It simply uses the low-level C API. We can define and convert the uh, Python object, which does everything it needs, like acquire the gill, and then get the, the proper function, convert it, and so on. The next step is where it's most interesting. Now, here you see the creation of the buddy threads. The scheme thread that made the call will lazily 
request the creation of a Python OS thread. So the scheme thread and this Python OS thread are both linked at runtime, and they can be figured out. Uh, they can be found through the, uh, a hash table. And so the scheme thread creates a Python OS thread with the proper data, which in this case, the most important thing to notice is that the OS mutex here, which is in the Python FPC state struct, is locked. And so the Python OS thread is trying to lock this mutex and so cannot execute because it's already locked. And also the scheme mutex is also locked, but this is a scheme mutex internal to Gambit inside the Gambit OS thread. So there's always a single OS thread here and there can be multiple OS threads on the CPython side. Now, the message that the, the scheme thread sends to the, OS, the Python OS thread is a call through the FPC, uh, message FPC struct field. It sends a call of the function hex with the arguments 42. And then the scheme thread unlocks the OS mutex, which allows this, the Python thread to, be, to unlock and, and resume execution. Now the scheme thread blocks on its own mutex and the Python thread which was trying continually to lock the mutex succeeds and then can continue, can get running. Executes the hex 42 call, gets the result and in the message field puts the message return with the value. This, at this point it raises an, a procedural interrupt and so it unlocks <clears throat> the scheme mutex. The procedural interrupt will actually call this procedure, which will go unlock its own mutex. And so the scheme, the gambit scheme scheduler will know that this thread can get running again. And notice that the mutex here is locked. And so the Python thread won't be able to continue execution as this is done in a loop. Now the Python thread is blocked, the scheme thread can get running again, and it gets the result, converts it back, and returns it uh, to the user. We've seen a lot of syntax, and maybe it's not really clear what it, uh, how it works, and so let's go over the Gambit Scheme Infix extension parser, which is a custom infix parser that's available in Gambit Scheme. We extended this parser in prior work to support uh, JavaScript syntax, some of the JavaScript syntax, and now we extend it further to support some of the Python syntax. The backslash tells the parser that we want to get into infix mode. In this case, we're going to read a Python import statement. Here we're in infix mode and we're going to read uh, and I get the attribute sin from the math object. Here the conversion happens automatically, and so since math.sin is a procedure, well, we get a scheme procedure back. Here we use the backtick in order to tell the parser to go back to reading infix, um, prefix expressions. And so in exact to exact up to the first parenthesis will be read as a scheme object. And this scheme object will be a, uh, the procedure in exact to exact. And then we resume the read to uh, the Python expression math.py. Now, this expression contains a scheme object and we have to find a way to pass this scheme object. Well, what this will do is the AST created will actually create a Python Lambda expression, which takes one argument, in this case, because we have only one backtick. If we have n backticks, so n scheme expressions, there will be n arguments. We'll create this Lambda, which will called which we'll call argument one of math.py. And at runtime, we will convert the first convert the inexact to exact to a Python function, and then pass that to the Lambda and get the result back. The parser also supports as we, we would want to, it supports the Python import syntax. So you can import uh, as you would do in any Python program. You can see that uh, we can import math, import sys and iter tools, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So the, uh, the, the rich 
Python import syntax actually works in our, in our uh, parser. And that was a goal of ours. And finally, for the six parser, we have to support a few other syntactic, uh, Python syntactic forms. And so we've seen the import statements, but uh, a lot of times in Python, you want to create uh, lists. And we can see that the list syntax here is exactly the same as you would see in Python. You get Python expressions inside a Python list. Note and you know that it's infix because you start by the backslash. And uh, you can do things like uh, use the or, uh, or expression or multiply a string by five. And that, since that actually means something in Python, you get back the result properly. One thing that's very important is to support uh, keyword, exp uh, keyword arguments. And we support keyword arguments both from with, within scheme calling Python functions using Gambit keyword arguments, but also from this, the six syntax we can see here that we're calling the math.isclose function using a keyword argument relative tolerance, and this works as expected. And here's another example of using uh, two scheme uh, expressions inside a single call. In this case, as we mentioned before, in this case we have two backticks, and so the lambda that's created that will accept the converted scheme objects, so the conversion of plus one one and times two four, it will be a lambda of two arguments. Now, let's go through uh, an example and serve HTTP requests with Flask, which is a very popular Python uh, package, to show the FFI in practice. Here we must first import the six module, which is essential because we, we target multiple languages using six, and in this case, we need the particular expansions uh, for Python syntax. Then we import the Gambit Python module with which handles setting up the CPython VM and everything. And then we just import uh, from Flask, we import the Flask class. We instantiate a Flask app as you would do in a typical Flask application. Then what we must do in Flask is uh, map associate routes with uh, request handlers. In this case, we associate the root route to the home scheme procedure. And the home scheme procedure will just append the system version string, which is going to be a, a string of v something, to hello from gambit string. And what's important to know is that each and every request will be handled in its own OS thread. So we need the mechanism, the FPC mechanism is able to request the instantiation of a scheme thread every time that Flask on its own creates a uh, Python OS thread. Finally, we can start the, let's say we're at a, uh, at a REPL. Well, you could start the app.run, you can start the Flask server using the keyword arguments host and port in a thread and continue typing in the in the repo. So for example, this is what request looks like. Now, in conclusion, uh, our FFI gives us access to four or almost 400,000 Python packages, which is uh, very interesting. We presented a low level interface to the Python CAPI, as well as a syntactic interface that supports an infix syntax, as well as what we consider our main contribution is the FPC mechanism that bridges the two different threading models between Gambit and CPython. Finally, in future work, we would like to explore uh, benchmarking and performance. Of course, that's, that would be very interesting to measure. Uh, we have ideas for a little bit more usability and cross-compatibility between uh, operating systems. And we are very interested in porting this FPC mechanism to other language implementations. Thank you for uh, listening to our talk.